I really felt compelled to send out this episode this week instead of next week. I was originally going to do every two weeks, and I still stand by every two weeks, but it's definitely placed on my heart today to bring this episode out to you so that you can share it and that you can send it to other people because I think it's valuable and I think it's very, very important. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the narrow gate. Hello and welcome to the narrow gate. My name is Gary and I'm pleased to be back with you. I know it's been a couple episodes. I'm very happy that Corey got to say a few things that have been on her mind, and I know you all appreciate it too. That's why you're listening. And so I want to start with prayer because I have my notes in front of me today, and they're exactly what I need. We can just get started. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you for this teaching that you're going to bring forward. We thank you for this discussion that you're going to bring forward. Father, we thank you for the wisdom and revelation that you're going to bring forward uh, in this message today. Father, I pray that you would touch each and every individual that is listening. And Father, I pray that you would give them the understanding and that you would uh, put a fire in their heart to have them search For the things that you want them to search for. So that they will know the truth. Because the truth sets us all free. So Father I pray that you would anoint this. And Lord we thank you. And Father I also pray. For the binding of any kind of distraction. Any kind of hindrance. Lord we just pray that you would just take over. Whether it's on the other side. With whoever is listening to this. And whether it's right here, where everything is being sent out. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. And we thank you for what you're going to do in the name of Jesus. So, anyway, the topic of this is about walking into the wine press. And this is basically what the Lord has shown me, or what I feel like the Lord has shown me, is that the shaking is not over, and this... Uh, the last of the season is not over yet we still have some things to walk through and we still have some refining that the Lord wants to do and besides all that I want to read this particular scripture Luke 22 verse 31 through 34 And Jesus goes like this, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny three times that you know me. What I want to say today is that I felt like the Lord was saying that the time of the virus is coming to an end. That the time of this pandemic is going to come to an end. And like I said, I don't have a time frame. The Lord didn't give me a time frame. I don't know when it's going to be. Part of me has felt like there was going to be there was going to be some kind of shifting or some kind of thing happening in general around January. But like I said, I'm not predicting that there's going to be a turnaround in January. But I have felt like, and I have spoken to other people, that I feel like there's going to be some kind of budge, or some kind of shift, or some kind of thing 
pertaining to this that would happen around January. So, and like I said, it's not like a genuine intuition, like the Holy Spirit just like landed it on me and said, January is when it's going to end. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I feel like something's going to happen in January, but I have no idea what's going to happen in January that pertains to it. But besides all that, I also wanted to mention that I feel like there's some spiritual warfare that is coming down the pike. And I personally have gotten a dream and it actually pertains to a group of people because multiple people had this dream uh, that was slightly different than the other. So I'm only going to mention a few things that pertain to it because there's a lot of personal things added to it. But we all feel like there's something corporately that's going to come down the pike that is going to squeeze um, the body of Christ in preparation for God to really move. And what I feel like is that the body of Christ is going to be sifted like wheat. And the situation with Peter, in my interpretation or my feeling of the whole reason why Peter was sifted like wheat was because there was a little bit of pride and there was a little bit of this strong protection that Peter had for Jesus and it was almost like a hindrance or it could have been a hindrance in blocking uh, Jesus from uh, walking in the plan that God had for him. Now ultimately nothing is going to stop it, stop what God's plan is regardless, especially when it comes to the Son of God. And Jesus got the word from the Father that Satan basically requested that the body or that Peter was going to be sifted like wheat. And in this process of Peter being sifted like wheat, if we look at the large scheme of things, this was basically to get him to a place where he could go back and be stronger than he was before. It needed to get some impurities out of him. And just like we, just like a wine press, when we put the grapes in the, uh, in the, in the new wine skin, and then the grapes are squeezed, all the impurities and all the things are, are filtered out and the, the juice just flows out into whatever container it needs to go in. So, that's where we're going to be. Where, it's, it's almost like I'm saying that we're going to have a grand finale here. And I know you all really don't want to hear that. Especially those that have been in this uh, situation for the past two years. There's been many, many, many different types of trials uh, with me in many different categories and many people have been stirred up and there's been a lot of heartache and there's been a lot of pain and there's been a lot of pe there's a lot of deaths there's been there's been hatred and confusion there's you know there's been suicides there's been all kinds of stuff that pertains to a lot of these lockdowns and other things and I'm not saying that God was causing any of these situations what I am saying is God allowed a shaking because Matthew 24 says that there will be shakings there will be birth pains and when these birth pains come they will be a sign to all those who believe that there is a collimation for things coming to an end and Keep in mind, when I say this, Satan has requested to sift Peter like wheat. Which means that Satan almost all the time is the accuser of the brethren. I shouldn't say almost all the time. He is the accuser of the brethren. So when we read in Job 23.10... 
but he knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come out as gold. So even in here, when Satan has uh, tried Job, he is put into a refining process. And in that refining process is where he comes out completely different than before. And just as where God isn't necessarily causing the issue, he does allow us to go through a refining process. And just like Peter, Peter went through a refining process. When Peter came in, he, was, he had this kind of mentality and thinking a certain way. And when he got out of it, he was completely different. He was almost humbled to the point of not very talkative. He, he, he wasn't as bold as he was before. And it just it put him to a process of being able to receive. And when Jesus came back and he, he asked Peter if he loves him three times, and each time Peter said yes, each time he sp Jesus spoke life into Peter, he got a little bit stronger, his countenance changed a little bit, and he was able to be who he needed to be at that point in time. Now granted, it wasn't until the power of the Holy Spirit fell upon Peter that he, op he operated in true faith and true boldness. And that was different than how Peter acted prior to that. So that's, you know, that's good to keep, you know, add in there. And, you know, it does say in scripture to count it all joy in various trials because it produces patience and long suffering. So even though we go through those particular situations that could be a little bit of a struggle when we come out of it, we're good and the good thing is is you know believers in Christ we have a relationship with the father so because we have a relationship with the father we can cling to him when we go through these storms we can cling to him when we're going through the refining processes and like I said not every refining process is Satan sifting somebody like wheat and I just want to clarify that that not every trial that we go through is through those kind of circumstances you know sometimes you know, just bad things happen there's you know sin you know people people are under the curse of sin those who are not in Christ and truly walking in in Christ that's what the world is the world you know has that sin nature in it so it's it's important to understand those particular things as well and to pray and seek the Lord and press into the word to get a full understanding of what our circumstances are when we're walking through them at that point in time because the Holy Spirit will convict us of all things so if we're personally going through something and we're not sure what it is we can pray seek the Lord and he could give us a dream he could give us a vision and he could also uh, show us in his word and we just open up the book the, the the Bible to the proper spot and the Lord shows us what scripture we need to see so these are important things to understand and so as far as the spiritual warfare aspect of it I I will go with what the a small portion of what the dream is because I like I said for privacy sake I don't want to say too much but I do want to say enough so that we know where we're coming where we're coming from so anyway, I, I dreamt that I was, um, get, I got out of bed and I was going to the restroom because I needed to go and I ended up get, going into the restroom. I got done and I opened the door and when I opened the door to walk out, one of our friends walked up to us and it walked up to me, I should say, and that person said to me, you need to prepare because spiritual warfare is coming. And it, it just sort of, it left sort of like an impression in me. And I just, I, I basically woke up at that point. And I, I would say from, 
I guess around 4.30 to 4.55 in the morning. I was there and then I, I said, you know, my wife woke up, Corey woke up and she apparently had a dream around the same time and she told me her dream and it was a correlation to this person and then that person had a dream themselves and then there were two more people that had uh, a, a dream that pertained either to her circumstances or corporate situations. So we all got together and we prayed about this and we felt like it was going to be, it was in our personal circle that some of these things were going to happen, but it also was a corporate thing. And it does seem like a corporate thing because there are people that I have spoken this word about, uh, about Satan and having permission to sift us like wheat. And lo and behold, all of a sudden there's all these people that are all of a sudden going through this fire burning process and uh, going through this wine press. And once again, that's to get the impurities out. So I want to add this and I want to say to you all that there is a refining process coming and it's going to be the final stages of the season. Keep that in mind. Hold on to it. But realize this. In my dream, it was mentioned we needed to pray. So that's another important thing. And some others got that too. That even though that there's spiritual warfare coming, so even... There's storms that, you know, we just got to walk through and there's no way around it. And then there are storms where Jesus spoke to the storm and the storm became quiet. So this is going to be this particular situation. This sifting like wheat that we're going through, like Jesus in the wilderness, when Satan came to Jesus doing all these temptations to him or trying to get him to be tempted, Jesus spoke the word and through spirit through that warfare satan backed away so that's where we need to be is we need to we need to be ready because we do wrestle not against flesh and blood as as in ephesians 6 so we can engage in spiritual warfare we can pray and we can fight against the enemy but there are some things that we're just going to have to walk through because it's just going to be the, the it's going to be the fire. It's just like when Corey was talking about going into Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego, going into the fiery furnace. They had to go into the fiery furnace, but Jesus, the fourth person, was behind him, behind them, through the process, and they came out without a singe or a burnt smell or anything of any kind. And I'm not saying that. We're, we're going to not take a few punches for some of us in this season. And I, I'm saying this because on a wider scale, there, there are people in other nations that are based, like Afghanistan, that are basically, they, they realize that their life could be very short. And since the Taliban and some other organizations are now in Afghanistan... They're basically living out in the in the desert, in the mountains, and then they'll come back into town, and they'll knock door to door, trying to talk to people about Jesus, which is basically a death sentence. Knocking, going up to people's doors, knocking on them, evangelizing them, and talking about Christ, you know, praying over them, and all kinds of stuff. That's that's a death warrant at this point in this time in that nation and keep in mind according to what nation they're in is according to what jurisdiction the powers and authorities have over a nation so whatever sin whatever things people allow in in a great abundance that is given permission or authority uh, for the nation to be um, I wouldn't say taken over, but it gives permission for these for these territorial spirits to have access to greater influence over people. And just like in Afghanistan, with their circumstances, there's a greater level of authority that's given to whatever territorial demons, principalities, 
kingdoms, thrones, whatever you want to say, they're given access and those are the circumstances that are going on over here. And the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning it, you know, such an extreme over there, and that's not even more of an extreme. If you go to China, it's even worse in China than it is over in Afghanistan right now. So, but if you look at the total opposite end of the spectrum, which is the United States, yeah, there's some persecution on the body of Christ, but is not in the extreme as it is over there. Lives are lost over there. Lives are being roughed up a bit or silenced or however you want to call it. So like I said, judging by the territory in which we live in is judging by how much authority the enemy has to come through a region or an area and afflict something upon a people. And I also want to read right now 1 Corinthians 3.13. Each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. And this is this correlates right along with what I've been saying before is that there will be fruit that will come out of our refining processes. There'll be fruit. There'll be change. There'll be transformation. People will be able to see a difference. And it's not, it's not going to be just sort of like maybe 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you're just like, oh, okay, I see a little bit of difference between Fred at this point and Fred now. What I'm saying is the weeks are going to go by and people are going to see the difference in people weekly, daily, monthly. There's just going to be a dramatic change with all the refining that's going on, with all the pressing and the squeezing and the juice coming out. And this also is important because... For those that do not have the ability to go through the fire and succumb to the old man are going to have a really, really hard time. And we, ha we have to understand that because there's a, there's a passage where Jesus says, Lord, where a person says, Lord, didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I heal, heal the sick in your name? Didn't I give sight to the blind in your name? Didn't I heal the brokenhearted in your name? I added that in your name. And the Lord and Jesus will say to them, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I don't know you. So even when people are operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I mean, they could be operating in another spirit, like a Kundalini spirit or, or something like that. But even if they're operating in the gifts of the Spirit and they're operating in the Holy Spirit, they will still, he will still not know them. And we have to remember the two greatest commandments is love God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And the second is, love your neighbor as yourself. And hopefully you love yourself in such a way that is holy and pleasing to God. Because if that's the case, then that's how you're going to treat your neighbor. If you're centered in God, that's how you're going to treat your neighbor. And for many of us, I know including myself, I could use a little bit more refining. And this is just the ticket. This is just the thing that is necessary, even though it kind of pains me to say I actually, when the refining process is over with and done with, I'm actually glad I went through it. And before the process happens and I know it's going to happen, I say to myself, I can't wait for it to happen because when I get out of this, I'm going to be completely different. I'm going to be more like Jesus, I'm going to be more like the Father, I'm going to be more connected to the Father, 
than I was before. I feel like at this point, I do need to say this. I feel like saying that in the past episodes, you've heard me talk about how there's going to be lots of blessings that are going to pour out. And I've said that I felt like the Lord has said that according to the works, like in 1 Corinthians 3.13, each one's works will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and fire will test what sort of work each one has done. So when we're going through these series of testings, we're also going to be tested with what we get. So if the Lord blesses us with something, then we're being tested by fire with it. He's observing what we're going to do with the blessing that we've received. And I also want to mention this is there's going to, in in this refining process for people, this is so important to be grounded in the Word, because if, if we're not grounded in the Word, then something could look like a blessing, and it really isn't. It could be straight from the pits of hell, and it could be camouflaged as a blessing. It could be a wolf in a sheep's clothing, Or they could be a wolf in sheep's clothing. And even as I speak right now, I do want to mention, and I was thinking about this before I even turned on the this episode, and I felt like the Lord said to me that there's gonna be people or a person that will be listening to this that may have somebody or somebody that seems like a blessing come into their life and it, and it, that person may be a wolf's in sheep's clothing and it's so important to weigh out a word that is given and it's supposed to be tested and tested with the word of God so if I say this to you all and there is somebody that that if one of you feels like this may be the case crack open the word pray do a little pray praise and worship and and try to ask the lord does this pertain to me because words are supposed to be tested and test everything test the test the spirit but i feel like that there is going to be somebody that is where where someone has come into their life but they're not who they seem to be. And how you really know about this, if if you've, you've prayed and you've seeked and you've tried to ask the Lord about it and you still aren't getting anything, then weigh that person to the Word of God. If you're a believer in Christ, weigh that person to the Word of God. Is that person building you up? Or are you being constantly torn down? Is this person motivating you to do greater things? Or do you constantly feel worthless? Or do you constantly feel like you're not good enough? Are you, are you in a good mood with this person? Or is it just really bad situation when the both of you come together? Weigh these things out because if, if you can open the Word of God and you even type on the internet and look up the scriptures that you need, you can weigh that person with the Word of God because the Word of God is truth. The Word of God is life. And when you, when you do that, you will see that what the perfect person is supposed to be like or could potentially become. And that's so important is we have to be willing and wanting to get closer to the Father for any means nothing can hinder it nothing can stop it because the father is our lifeline Jesus Christ is our lifeline and if anything cuts our lifeline then we're going to shrivel up like the fig tree 
when Jesus cursed the fig tree, there was no life in the fig tree because the fig tree was not connected to God. The fig tree was not connected to the Father. It was not producing any fruit or any good fruit. So it's so important for the fruit to be good. So I'm going to veer away from that now. But anyway, besides all that, I do want to mention that, like I said before, that there will be blessings that, or things that seem like blessings, but they may not be really blessings. And like I said, test it. Because everything can be tested and weighed, and God will reveal those things. Anyway, the, the sifting processes, there will be temptations. And the, the temptations could be disguised as something innocent. But they may not really be innocent. Or that thing may not really be innocent. So hold tight to the words and the teachings of Jesus. As this will be your center of gravity. I'm referring to the whole Bible. Keep seeking his presence and you will pass the test. Some of you have struggled in some areas and some testings for a while. Almost like you've been going around the mountain. But you haven't really been able to get to the promised land. And it's been happening over and over and over again. For some of you it may have taken 20 or 30 years. But you're, you know, it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. You know, you could be believers in Christ and and you, you're pressing into God, but it just it just seems like something just won't break. Well, this is the season for those things to break and for breakthrough to occur. This is the season that your life is going to change. This is the season. That you will no longer climb around the mountain. But you will enter the promised land. This is the season. So hold tight to that. Because like I said before. This is a season of breakthrough. And even though it hasn't seemed like a season of breakthrough. Because I said. I said when it, the moment that I started calling this season a new season. I've been calling it a season of breakthrough. And I know for some of us, I know personally, I'm like, I see little miniature bits of, of breakthrough, but where's like the total going over the mountain breakthrough that I've been counting on? But that's the thing. When you're going through the refining, when you're going through the process, you don't necessarily notice it until it's all done with. But other people can see the process of you going through the refining. And that's impressive. And that's what brings people to Jesus. Being under persecution is what brings people to Jesus. Fighting against the odds is where the breakthrough happens. Fighting against the odds is where revival happens. And I, I guess I'm going to end close to this point is for the longest time people have been praying for revival and prophesying about revival and renewal and all this transformation that's supposed to happen a harvest and all these things people have been praying for it and crying out for it they've been going to church on their Saturday Sunday and maybe Friday meeting, meetings and crying out and saying, Oh Lord, bring the revival because we just want that feeling of your presence to fall upon us and transform us and transform others. But it comes in a price. People have been calling for another awakening, at least in the United States. They've been calling for a third great awakening. But what people fail to realize is every time that there was a great awakening there was war on the streets happened in the revolutionary war happened during the civil war first great awakening second great awakening and if you look at the United States right now it is, seems like it's in total upheaval it seems like the situations and circumstances, it doesn't matter what political party 
that we're in, it looks like it, there's some sort of thing that's happening that causes us to feel like things are hopeless. And that's where Jesus steps in. We've been crying out for a third great awakening. This is the third great awakening. It's happening now and it's bubbling up and it's growing. And the harder the wine press squeezes, the greater the awakening. And the last thing that's on my mind is this. There are a lot of well-respected people that I look up to in the body of Christ that are really good in theology and eschatology and and even if, even giving words of knowledge and and prophecies and and things of that nature but when the one thing that really really gets to me and I feel like the Lord has shown me is the separatism there is a separation even in the body of Christ there is a separation in the body of Christ where politics it seems to have infiltrated the system and the thing is the Lord has shown me or I feel like the Lord has shown me really strong that when we talk about other people we are not supposed to put them in groups and the one thing that is an example that really seems to get to me is the whole conservatism liberalism liberals do this conservatives do this and it places us into a position of poking at the other person when in the body of Christ we are supposed to be unified and we are supposed to come together and we are supposed to draw others to the glory of God and how can you do that if you can't love your neighbor as yourself it's just like when Morgan Freeman it was asked well how do you stop racism and Morgan Freeman said well, I'll tell you how to stop racism. You stop calling me a black man, and I'll stop calling you a white man. And that's a profound statement. Because we're too... We categorize people, we tribalize people, and we put them into different groups. And that causes us... And, and that that's like a level of pride. And separating people into groups and categories is in essence it's pretty much racism in itself and basically the, the the deep root cause of it all is looking at somebody different than yourself so if somebody isn't like me and I look at them I look at them differently because they should be like me and that's the basis of racism. That's the basis of prejudice. That's the basis of looking at somebody weird because they're wearing a mask. It's the same as looking at somebody differently because they're unvaccinated. It's the same as looking at somebody different because of their social economic status. Like I said before, in Rwanda, people were separated into different tribes and they were looked down upon or looked up to depending on what tribe they were and that caused a lot of wars and a lot of resentment, a lot of bitterness, a lot of hostility for the longest time. If we're going to be walking in the body of Christ, we got to let go of the liberalism quotes we got to let go of the conservatism quotes and focus on the basis biblical values in which Jesus requires us to walk in. There are certain requirements. There are certain areas of morality. There are certain areas of justice. 
there are certain areas of spirituality that is required for the body of Christ to walk in. And we're getting to a point now where we can no longer say, I'm a Christian because I'm calling myself a Christian. There's going to come a point in time when it's going to be very easy to tell who is a Christian and who's not a Christian. There's going to come a time when people are not even going to want to call themselves Christians. Or people are not going to want to call themselves Messianic Jews. There's going to come a time, maybe not, maybe not anytime soon, at least in the United States. It definitely is in other places, but there will come a time when it covers the whole earth. And whatever territory we give to the, the powers and the principalities and the worldly forces and the kingdoms of darkness is whatever causes them to grow and is whatever causes them to maintain ground. So we also have to realize whatever sin we engage in also gives strength to whatever is in Ephesians 6. And I'm just going to read Ephesians 6 and end it here. Okay, so this is Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 13. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the shems of the devil. For we net wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able with, to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. So we can't let the enemy maintain ground. And if we're in a place where we do have the opportunity and the freedom to speak up, then we should speak up and we should take an opportunity to stand for what is right and not let us be taken over by the darkness. Because the darkness doesn't overtake the light the light takes over the darkness when you turn when you are in a dark room it, it can be pitch black but as soon as you turn that light switch on the whole room is taken over by light and depending on the intensity is how bright the room is but in general if you put a candle if you light a candle in a dark room or even outside when it's nighttime that little area is going to light up and that's what light does to darkness and just like when there's a great awakening or a third great awakening which technically is supposed to cover the whole earth whenever you have that that lights up everything and the darkness doesn't have the authority to take out a great awakening the darkness doesn't have the authority to take out a harvest. The darkness doesn't have the authority to take out those who are in Christ. Because I've said before, we are ambassadors. Our citizenship is not of this world. The moment we realize the authority in which the Lord has given us is the moment that we can walk in the purposes and callings and plans that he has for us, Jeremiah 29, 11. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time. Father, we thank you for moving how you moved. And, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, I pray for those individuals that may be tested with an individual or multiple people that are tested with individuals who are listening to this. Lord, I pray that you would convict them if they are walking in the right direction. I pray you would convict them if they're walking in the wrong direction. And I, Father, I pray that you would make their path straight. 
Father, I pray that you would uh, deposit your peace upon them. And Father, I pray that they may hear from you correctly and not be thinking about things in the flesh, but be totally obedient to what you have to say. And Father, I also pray, Lord, for all of us that are going through the wine press at this point in time. And if those of us that haven't gone through the pine press, Lord, I pray that you would prep and prepare them for the wine press. Because the sifting is coming, but it's only for a short time. Just remember that. And Father, I pray that you would help them if there are people that tend to shrink back and seclude themselves and go off into a place that is away from people. Father, I pray that that would not happen. Father, I pray that you would secure them in faith and that you would uphold them and guard them with your righteous right hand. Father, I thank you, Lord, that your wings are over us like wings of eagles. And I just declare that over the body of Christ and those that are listening, that we shall be guarded like wings, like eagles. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, and I praise you, and I give you all the glory. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And one more thing before I wrap it all up. I do want to say this. We have some other scriptures that we're going to attach to the notes when we send out the episode. So I just invite you all to look at those notes. There could be some links and some scriptures and some, and I'll probably put down the word that I gave uh, on this uh, episode today. And you can all meditate on it and soak on it and just, uh, Bask in what the Lord is going to do for you because it's going to be fantastic. And if there's any ounce of fear, I just bind that in the name of Jesus and I command fear to be silent. I command fear to be silent in the name of Jesus and I just declare peace, peace over you all because the Lord loves you. My peace I give you, my peace I leave you, not as the world can give. So let your hearts not be troubled. Do not be dismayed. And last but not least, I promise this time, if you are struggling with any kind of thing on our YouTube channel, we have this, uh, we have this playlist that is set up on our Narrowgate YouTube channel. And it's a whole bunch of scriptural affirmations. And... I, I put them up there daily, weekly, monthly, depending on what time I, you know, I look at it. And if I feel like the Lord has put it on my heart to put certain scriptural affirmation videos on this particular playlist, then that's what I do. So I encourage you all to go and check those out. You could probably look up these things, but if you want an easy spot and you want it to be pretty quick, just look at our playlist scriptural affirmations and you'll find what you're looking for so once again thank you thank you for listening you're a blessing to us we hope that we're a blessing to you and we'll keep on going in jesus name 